Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He's a fussy little engine too, always pulling coaches about ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does. He loves playing tricks on them, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day, after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran, laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry up yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon, the proud engine, began making his plan to teach Thomas a lesson for teasing him. Almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster. Too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Beep, beep. Stop, stop. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last, they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next he went on to a turntable thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran on to a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. Maybe I don't have to tease Gordon to feel important, Thomas thought to himself. And he puffed slowly home. Thomas the tank engine was grumbling to the other engines. I spend my time pulling coaches about, ready for you to take out on journeys. The other engines laughed. Why can't I pull passenger trains too? You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas. I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill, 
The men worked hard, but he didn't get better. He felt just as bad next morning. Henry usually pulled the first train, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill, he thought, perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, they grumbled. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas. Thomas waited and waited. The people got in. The conductor and station master walked up and down. The porter banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited. Sir Topham Hatt came to see what was the matter, and the conductor and station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches, ready to start. Let's not be impatient, said his driver. We'll wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train, or perhaps the driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started without his coaches. As he passed the first signal tower, men waved and shouted, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine, he thought importantly. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 he puffed, pretending to be like Gordon. People have never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave. And he whistled. Beep, beep. Thank you. Then he came to a signal at danger. Bother, he thought. I must stop. And I was going so nicely, too. What a nuisance signals are. He blew an angry beep, beep on his whistle. The signalman ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas. Can't you see? Where are your coaches, then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling Sir Topham Hatt what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back, they saw how sad he was and couldn't be cross. He was coupled to the train, and this time he really pulled it. Afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull a train, but forgot about the coaches. But Thomas had already learned not to make the same mistake again. Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night, he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some freight cars to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find freight cars.
Now, the freight cars are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about the freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The conductor blew his whistle. Beep, beep, answered Thomas and started off. But the freight cars weren't ready. Oh, oh, they screamed. Wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss, grumbled the cars. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whish! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. Hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself. But the cars grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the cars, bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed. But the cars took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh, dear, what shall I do, cried Thomas. They rattled straight through and swerved into the goods yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop. When he opened his eyes, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. There, watching him, was Sir Topham Hatt. What are you doing here, Thomas? he asked. I've brought Edward's freight cars, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You've got a lot to learn about freight cars, Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Every day, Sir Topham Hatt came to the station to catch his train. Hello, he always said to Thomas. Don't let the silly freight cars tease you. Remember, you have an important job as a special helper in the train yard. There were lots of freight cars, and Thomas worked very hard pushing and pulling them into place. There was also a small coach and two strange things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he told Thomas. The cranes are for lifting heavy things, like engines and coaches and freight cars. One day, Thomas was in the yard. Suddenly, he heard an engine whistling. Help! Help! A freight train came rushing through much too fast. The engine was James, and he was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire. They're pushing me! They're pushing me! He panted. On! On! laughed the freight cars, still whistling. Help! Help! Poor James disappeared. I'd like to teach those freight cars a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Soon came the alarm. James is off the line, the breakdown train, quickly. Thomas was coupled on and off they went.
Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those freight cars and their tricks. I hope poor James isn't hurt. James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It was those silly freight cars and your old wooden brakes that caused the accident. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled away the unhurt freight cars. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They groaned. Serves you right. Serves you right, puffed Thomas. He was hard at work puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson, this'll teach you a lesson, he told the freight cars. And they answered, yes it will, yes it will. They left the broken cars, then with two cranes they put James back on the rails. tried to move, but he couldn't, so Thomas helped him back to the shed. <whistles> Sir Topham Hatt was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said, I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint. And you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line and two coaches called Annie and Clarabelle. He puffs proudly backwards and forwards with them all day. He is never lonely. Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry, but never forgets to say, boop, boop, and Thomas always whistles, beep, beep, in return.